Hello there. I wanted to talk to you about something called bright light therapy. B L T. Not a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. <laughs> bright light therapy. This is a type of therapy where people use a light box, and a light box looks about the size of an iPad or a light screen, and you can set it up on a desk. It's kind of about the size of a piece of paper like this. And you can set it up and it shines light on you. And it's something that is remarkably helpful for people who suffer from sleep disturbances, from seasonal affective disorder and major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. And I'm gonna go into all of that right now and tell you a little bit more about bright light therapy or light boxes. Okay, so bright light therapy is a non-drug intervention which helps to treat depression and sleep problems. And um, one of the things that is particularly helpful if you live in a dark place or you're living in a place and it's winter is that you might find that your mood gets lower um, especially in the winter when it's darker out and that's called seasonal affective disorder or SAD, SAD. And uh, people find that they might have that in the, in the fall, the autumn or in the winter and sometimes it might persist into the spring. Now obviously if you live in a place full of natural sunlight then getting out and about in the light is a natural way that you don't need to purchase a light box. Um, but when it does get into the darker months and you find that your mood is dropping, this is something that's really helpful. And I'll tell you how to use the light box in a minute. The other thing it's very helpful for treating is major depressive disorder. So people who suffer from very low moods uh, a lot of the time. And you can, you can use the light therapy even if you're on antidepressants. Um, so it's a really helpful intervention that has very few side effects and is enormously helpful. And I'll talk about why in just a minute as well. Then the third thing, so I mentioned SAD, major depressive disorder, and bipolar disorder. So bipolar disorder is where you get high mood, high mood swings and very low mood swings, manic and depressive mood swings. And it can be quite helpful for that as well to use a light box or bright light therapy. The other thing, and this particularly pertains to people as we age, is um, the, the concepts of uh, sleep problems. We don't always sleep as well as we used to as we get older. And that's why I thought this would be interesting for people. Many older people suffer from insomnia or they find their sleep-wake cycle is not as regular as it used to be. And then also sleep problems that are related to Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia, they can sometimes be treated quite successfully with bright light therapy. Um, bright light therapy is often best in these instances if you combine it with other treatments. So obviously talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I just think this is really interesting and I wanted to alert you to something that you could look into for yourself or discuss with your doctor. Um, sleep therapies that you might choose with your doctor might include um, sleep hygiene, which is making sure you go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time, that you have a calming ritual before you go to sleep, that you sleep in a cool room, a dark room, a quiet room, and so on and so forth. There might also be certain foods that if you don't want to eat too close to bedtime, you don't want to drink too much water too close to bedtime, or you'll be up in the night running to the loo. And um, basically sleep problems are some things uh, and sleep problems are things that, that affect us all, especially as we age. So um, how does bright light therapy work? I'd like to talk a little bit about how it works, even though we kind of don't know. I mean, it's, it's not terribly scientific, this. But um, the, the idea is, what, what's believed to happen is that when light hits the back of our eyes, that it releases certain uh, neurochemicals in our brain, possibly related to serotonin, which definitely affects your mood and your sleep cycles. 
and that that in itself causes some trigger reaction to change our brain chemistry because our sleep cycles and our mood cycles are very related to our neurochemicals in our brain. So did that, that didn't really answer how it works, but that's kind of the best that, that I have been able to come up with. Um, so serotonin, and of course the other, the other brain chemical very responsible for how you sleep is melatonin. As you know, you can take melatonin tablets a while before you go to bed and that can help to make you feel more sleepy. So it's kind of thought that um, serotonin and melatonin, those two neurochemicals, get influenced when you use bright light therapy. Uh, so it says here, low moods uh, can improve with bright light therapy because it changes the balance of brain chemicals and that changes the sleep-wake cycle. And sometimes our moods are related to our sleep-wake cycle. Um, the side effects of bright light therapy, there's not a lot of downsides. You might find you're a little more dazzled. You could find that, um, that you actually get a little visual glare. You might feel a little wired or your eyes might be irritated. Very few people get headaches with bright light therapy. Um, and the side effects usually decrease with time as you get used to having a, a bright light. Um, there's no long-term side effects. It can't hurt your eyes in the long run. So, um, it's particularly helpful then also because it can be used in conjunction with whatever medications a person is taking for depression or for um, sleep issues or for any other mood or sleep um, complaints that, that someone is, is experiencing. So um, if you were interested in looking into bright light therapy, you would need to get yourself a light box. And not all light boxes are the same. So if you were buying a light box, you want to make sure that you're buying one that specifically says it's used to treat depression uh, or sleep, depending what you're using it for. So um, then there's, there, there's, a, there's a rating where you can figure out how much light is being delivered from a light box. And that's called Lux, L-U-X, Lux. In general, you don't want to use less than 2,500 lux. That would be pretty useless. It wouldn't be enough light. And you don't want to use more than 10,000 lux because 10,000 is about the most that has been shown to be effective. And anything more than that is wasted. So um, if you get yourself a light box that is 10,000 lux, then you won't have to sit in front of it for as long. And the idea is that as early in the morning as possible, as soon after you've got up, that you sit with the light box in front of you for about 30 minutes. So if you have a light box that is 10,000 lux and you're sitting at your table, you can put your light box on the table. It's helpful if you get it a little above your head so it's coming down on you, I suppose to mimic sunlight. Uh, you're less likely to have eye glare and eye effect because it's coming down on you instead of up into your eyes. You don't need to look up into the light box. You could be sitting there reading. You could read the newspaper if you still do that these days. You could read your news on the iPad or the phone. You could be eating your breakfast, drinking your tea or talking to someone, but just make sure that the light was in front of you. And you do that for about 30 minutes in the morning after you've woken up. If you have a light box that is less than 10,000 lux, you would have to use it for longer. That's the only disadvantage. What else can I tell you? Oh yes, when you buy a light box, you want to make sure it emits white light. There are also blue light emitters, but they're not as effective and there hasn't been as much research done on the blue light boxes to show how effective they are for depression. You also want to choose a box that has the largest light surface. So you can get smaller ones or bigger ones, but you want to get the largest one that your budget allows and that you have room for in your home because it's more effective the larger it is. Uh, what else can I tell you? You could use the light box later in the day if first thing in the morning was really impractical for some reason. You can use it later in the day, but it might leave you feeling a little wired when you're going to bed 
although um, that you might find that you use it better in the afternoon. So you could play around with that and see what worked best for you and what affected your sleep cycle and your mood to um, the most advantage. I would say um, it's recommended to use in the morning. I know I used one when I was living in a very um, northern uh, place and it, it would get very dark in the winter and so I used one there. And I used it sometimes in the late afternoon and that was particularly helpful. So you can play around with it. There's no harm, it's just light after all. Um, so that's about all I can tell you about bright light therapy. But I think it's a really interesting concept and something really worth knowing about because as we age, we might have loved ones or friends who, um, who themselves are suffering from sleep problems or from uh, mood disorders related to sleep or insomnia or even um, sleep problems to do with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, and if you have any of those conditions, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I really hope that you're able to find a way to uh, navigate those, those difficult times. Um, but maybe that will make it a little bit easier to you to know about bright light therapy. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. Remember to try my other playlists. Each one is like a one hour class in the studio and check out my other videos, including health and wellness tips, product reviews, and more. See you soon.